Welcome back to Exposing Human Trafficking. You know, this is why I get so angry and furious with Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt was providing transportation for my stepfather, George Bermudez Sr., who is a human trafficker, a pedophile, a child porn producer, and for my older stepbrother, George Bermudez Jr., his son, who is also a human trafficker and a um, porn producer. <sighs> Brad kept bringing them around me. He kept flying them in, first class tickets. He came to, uh, I was at Without Walls International Church in Tampa, Florida. And this was August 31st, 2004 in Tampa. It was a church that was run by Paula and Randy White. Big ministers. Um, you've probably heard about them. Um, they had a TV show. They were televangelists. Or they became that later on as their ministry grew. And um, Perry Stone was speaking there that night. He was preaching about the armor of God from Ephesians 5. Perry Stone was one of my favorite preachers, if not my ultimate favorite. And so I went to go see him. Uh, when Perry Stone did a presentation, he would make a set. You know, like the full armor of God, he had a mannequin dressed like a Roman soldier. He had the um, stage looking like a Roman place. It had like columns and everything. Um, he's got videos online. You could check them out and you could see because he kind of creates an audio visual um, experience along with his teachings. So it was always very interesting for me. And um, having my background in production, I really enjoyed going to his um, teaching, preaching um, events. Um, I was an ordained minister by this time. And um, I went outside. Um, I smoked cigarettes. And Brad showed up. He told me that he was making a movie. Um, that he was impressed with the um, stage that Perry had set up, that it was very similar to the set he was working on. Um, George Bermudez Jr. showed up. He said that they needed some pictures of him. He took two photographs, and then he came back to me. He smoked a cigarette with me. Um, uh, he said he had to go. I went back inside a little bit later when the preaching started, Brad came and sat down next to me. He didn't have a Bible with him. So he looked at mine and then afterwards he went up to some ladies that were sitting behind me. He gave them 20 bucks and told them to come and talk to me. These ladies came later on to prophesy to me that the sweet love that I was craving was going to be there for me very soon and that I, uh, my husband would be there. I started crying because of what they've done to me. I never wanted to get married. I saw marriage as a trap because I had was going through my parents, well, my stepfather and my mom's divorce, which took nine years, and I saw their miserable marriage, and I had decided, after what Brad had done to me, back in Chatsworth, California, in 1989, I would never marry anyone again, because Brad considered us to be married. I started crying and um, 
after the service was over, there was an altar call. And I was leaving the church. And that's when I saw Brad at the altar call with my older stepbrother, George Bermudez Jr., next to him. I was hoping they were going to get saved and just stop this nastiness. The next night, Perry Stone announced that Brad Pitt had been at church and that he had renounced Satanism and had rededicated his life to the Lord. Yeah, let's see how long that lasts, right? It didn't last too long. Because he's a Satanist again. So whether or not he really did repent that night, or if it was just more theatrics, you know, only God knows. Uh, when I moved to Colorado, it was August 30th, 19, no, it was 2000, sorry, 2007. My stepfather, George Bermuda Sr., and Brad Pitt showed up in Alamosa Regional Airport. Brad went off his separate ways. I was buying the house in Blanca. The closing was the next day, and I was staying in my RV at an RV park called Economy or something, RV Park. It was on Highway 160 right outside of Alamosa. Economy go-kart, RV park, something like that. Um, and my stepfather called me. I gave him the, the back room of the RV, and I was going to sleep in the front in the sofa bed. And he called me into the room, and when I went into the room, he was laying naked on the bed with an erection. I said, oh, sorry, I didn't know that you didn't have any clothes on, and I walked out. He got dressed, he got mad, he said, take me to the hotel, I'm not staying here. So I took him to a hotel. Uh, it's changed names so many times, but it's right in Alamosa. Um next to the Loaf and Jug. The Loaf and Jug is on the corner of Highway 160 and um, Highway 17. Um, this hotel has a water park in it. I don't know what it's called right now, but it's changed names so many times, but anybody in that area knows which hotel it is. It's like diagonal from True Grits Restaurant that was a restaurant made by um, John Wayne. John Wayne used to film a lot of westerns out in Colorado and New Mexico. So I left him there. Two years later, again, uh, let me look at the calendar for a minute. I'll give you an exact date. It was a Tuesday. Again, end of August. Um, let's see here if I can find it. But it was the last Tuesday of August 2009. And my stepfather was coming to visit me in Colorado. You might ask why I still kept a relationship with him. He stopped drinking. Um, and after... Oh, I'll have to tell you that video. That, and another one, I guess. After, well, basically, this is what happened. The last time they trafficked me in Tampa, I got a hold of their knife, and I went after them. It was my stepfather and my stepbrother and this nasty Mexican named Jesus Rodriguez that lived across the street. He was an illegal. He got his papers with some amnesty program and um, 
they used to use him to make movies with me. He ended up giving me chlamydia really bad. He ended up getting me pregnant, which they ate the fetus. And so since the trafficking had stopped and the drinking had stopped, I was dumb enough to forgive him. To keep peace in the family. The date was September 1st. <coughs> uh, my stepfather was supposed to fly to Alamosa. Um, he had a connecting flight in Denver on United Airlines. He called me up and told me that he couldn't fly into Alamosa. Um, supposedly it was bad weather. And he told me to go pick him up in Pueblo, Colorado. When I got to Pueblo, Colorado, he was there with Brad. Brad had on a wig and sunglasses. But I could see Brad's first class ticket sticking out of his pocket that said Brad Pitt. And, um... He said Brad was going to go get a rental car, but that he had to go do something. And my stepfather came in my car with me. Um, on that ride, he told me that Brad had HIV, never to sleep with him. He told me who he caught it from, but I'm not going to say. Um, because it's, you know, just hearsay. When we were getting to my house, my stepfather said that my older half-brother, I'm sorry, stepbrother, so hard, the paternity mess, the way they hid my paternity, so that's why I go between father, stepfather, half-brother, stepbrother, because my mom hid my paternity until two years ago, so... It's hard to rename the labels. But he told me that Georgie was coming. And he was bringing the camera. And I said not to my house. When we got to my house, my stepfather got mad. He said he didn't want to stay there. He said my house, he didn't like it because it was in the country. And he wanted to go back to the hotel. So I left him back at that hotel. The same one I had left him the first time. A few days later, I think it was like the next day, I taught ballet at the community center in Blanca, Fort Garland. And I got to my ballet class. Um, Roseanne, the lady at the front desk, told me that my old boyfriend from California was there waiting for me. That he had waited for two hours for me to come in. I didn't know what she was talking about. And then there were some steps, and there was Brad again, disguised. And, of course, Brad always asked me, the first things out of his mouth was always, did you do porn, and do you remember this boy from Chatsworth, Colorado, uh, California? Which I always tell him no, because I never did porn. And I never had a boyfriend in Chatsworth. What I had was a human trafficking boyfriend. So, he told me that there were some really bad people that wanted to hurt me, and that he wanted to offer me protection, and he wanted to know where I lived. I said, nice try. If I'm in a lot, that kind of trouble, you need to call the cops. Then he started talking about Illuminati and World Trade Center, and of course, I was like, what a nutcase. Um, I asked him if he was there to put his kids in my ballet class because um, he said he was married. He said no, and I said, well, I'm sorry, I got to go. I got a class to give. I went to the shower, took a hot shower, got into my leotards, went up to my class, and he was outside of my classroom on a sofa smiling. I closed the door. He got mad and left. Friday, September 4th, I went home. Someone had put something in my food that I had in the refrigerator after I ate it. I didn't know that they had put something in it. But after I ate it, I felt really tired. I went to go sleep. And that's when I was awakened by Tom Hickey, the serial rapist of Chatsworth. And um, 
my stepbrother, George Bermudez Jr., the human trafficker. Um, Tom Hickey was sodomizing me, and they were making movies. Um, I couldn't fight them back again because of the drugs. I started to rebuke them in Jesus' name and plead the blood of Jesus, and it didn't work. They kept going. And I yelled, somebody help me. And that's when one of my gods came in, Odin, and saved me. I don't think you're ready for the details, so I'll save it until you guys are ready for that. They ended up leaving, but this is how they screwed Brad over, because Brad was supposed to be the one to take my ass virginity, as Tom Hickey put it. And they screwed Brad over. There was another incident when I first moved to Colorado in 2007. It was in October, early October. I had a boyfriend named Kelly. We went to Santa Fe Mall. He had to do some plumbing work out there. He left me at the mall with another friend, a lady that was friends with us. Um, Kelly met up with us again when we got to Burlington Coat Factory. Brad pulled out the hypnotic object that the doctors used that was stolen from the doctor's office, used the trigger word, and tried to lead me out of the mall. Kelly stopped it, and Brad said, who are you? And Kelly said, I'm her boyfriend. Brad asked me if he was my boyfriend. I said, yes. Brad got mad and left. I don't know why anybody would want to remain in the satanic group, in the stupid coven where they all backstab each other, treat each other like crap. Brad is a sucker because of all the money that he spends on these people. Um, he flies them all first class. He pays for everything. They bleed him dry. You know, it's no wonder why Brad Pitt is still working and hasn't retired. He can't afford to. He's got too many leeches and parasites to support so there is another update some more information if you like it um, go ahead and give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't comment down below if you have any questions or anything to say and definitely share 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 because I'm sure that I'm not the only one that this group is targeted and there should be not one more victim of human trafficking thank you